Hi everyone, the hottest team in the Western Major Baseball League was Lethbridge. The Bulls had won four in a row heading into their game last night in Saskatoon. But they got beat 2-1 to one by the Yellow Jackets. That evens their record to 7-7 seven and seven on the season. The Bulls are in swift current tonight. Medicine Hat is in Moose Jaw. The Colorado Avalanche may not select defenseman Seth Jones with the first overall pick in the National Hockey League draft on June 30th in New Jersey. Joe Sackick, the Avs executive vice president, told the Denver Post that Jones won't be taken by the Avs because the three top-rated forwards are too good to pass up. Sackick was referring to Nathan McKinnon, who I would select first overall, no doubt about it, Jonathan Drouin, uh, both from Halifax, and Finnish center Alexander Barkov. Of course, the Avs could just be doing some posturing to see what trade bait is out there too. They may not even use the pick at all. You never know. And it's game four tonight between the Bruins and Blackhawks. Boston leads the Stanley Cup final two games to one. Game six of the NBA Finals was played in Miami last night. San Antonio looking to wrap things up. And even though they were down by two after the first quarter, the Spurs held a halftime lead of 50 to 44. And then the Spurs lead grew to 10 points after three quarters. They seemed to be headed towards another championship. But the Heat finally woke up in the fourth quarter. They roared back to take the lead for the first time since early in the second, led by the play of LeBron James. He had 32 points. But they were actually down by five with less than 30 seconds to play. And the Heat scored on two miraculous shots. One here by Ray Allen to tie the game at 95 and send it to overtime. And in OT, it was the Heat prevailing. As 103-100 was the final score of the series is tied 3-3. Game 7 tomorrow in Miami. The Calgary Stampeders play their final preseason game tomorrow night. The Stamps are in Saskatchewan to take on the Rough Riders. And no doubt about this. Quarterback Drew Tate would like to have a much better game than he had last week against BC. Glenn Campbell reports. Drew Tate is the first to admit he struggled in the Stampeders' first preseason game against the BC Lions. He just couldn't seem to get any kind of rhythm. And what did he take out of the game? Just that uh, wasn't as uh, accurate as I wanted to be. Um, but it, and uh, the opportunity, I mean, we only had 10 plays, so that made it that much harder. But uh, given that, I think it just puts a bigger chip on your shoulder to come out and to play better, perform better, and uh, to find a rhythm and to get in sync and move, uh, move the chains. Tate will get an opportunity to find that rhythm tomorrow night. He's slated to play a half against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in the Stamps' final tune-up before the regular season. And I'm, and I hope I get to play a half because uh, I want as many plays as I can get. It's the only way I'm going to get better. And I think that's really, uh, you know, if, if they keep the whole, the ones in at the same time. So, I mean, if we can get as many plays as we can, uh, I mean, that's only going to make us all better and it'll get us ready for week one. I'd like him to feel confident when the game is over. Basically, that's it. I mean, uh, he has had a good week of practice. Now, just show it on the field and have some fun out there, make some plays, but then just, uh, you know, it's not like he's trying to win the job or anything in this game. He's, he's our starter. And the Stamps have decided to slow things down with Tate this week. They're hoping that will help his arm. There's a lot of throwing, and I do believe his arm's uh, not feeling quite as fresh as it will in the season. So we've backed off a little bit on the throwing one of days. So I feel like he's had a great week because of that. The arm feels fine. My, my elbow has always been kind of sore, and uh, but ever since the first preseason ga preseason game, we really only had about one a day. So that's been a lot more rest on my elbow, which has helped. Now I couldn't pass up the opportunity to talk to Drew about his hair. No, he's not getting all hippie on us. It's all for a good cause. It'll go towards making a wig for a sick child when he chops it off. I was going to cut my hair right before camp, and then a friend of mine was telling me about it. So I looked it up, called them, got some info about it, and uh, it's a really neat deal. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that it works out and I can, you know, my hair can contribute to whatever. I've been very blessed to have hair. You know, I, I live with Brad Sinopoli, so uh, <laughs> he tries to throw in shots every now and then, but I just, I just start doing this to my hair, and he didn't really say much. <laughs> Andrew says his hair will be cut in the very near future, much like mine was today. Ooh, snazzy. Coming up next, we're going to look at Pets of the Week. One dog, three cats, all looking for new homes. Mm.